Hello everyone, welcome back to our series Understanding Simbet. In our previous video, we started looking at uh, performance criteria weighting tool and we did address what that tool is all about. We also talked about uh, the importance of uh, ranking different performance criteria of an element. We went further and uh, looked at different factors that you need to consider during ranking of performance criteria. And today, in our part two, in our tutorial today, I want us to focus on, uh, on the same tool and you're going to dive in on how do we populate using those factors that we did talk about in part one. So we need to ask ourselves, what does this tool uh, communicate? One, it tells you the number of assessments that you need to have. So it's going to tell you the number of uh, cards or assessments that you need to conduct within uh, that term or that module. And number two, it also communicates that critical performance criteria are given more weight compared to non-critical uh, PCs. And we did address that in our last video. It also addresses that only realistic weights and we are talking about weights here, we're talking about uh, allocation of marks. So only realistic uh, weights of elements can be distributed. Not every mark that you have or that you get during uh, your population of this tool can be distributed to different uh, performance criteria of each element. So we are going to do that practically. And today I want us to focus on uh, one of the factors that we are going to use to populate this tool, and that is critical aspects. We did talk about uh, critical aspects again in our last video, and uh, it is the most preferred factor to use during population of this tool, especially when you're talking about allocating weights to elements. So if you're called upon to develop a PC weighting tool, then you need to use critical aspects. And you did address why it's very critical. If one of those critical aspects uh, is not performed well, then it's going to have a negative impact on performance. So we need to focus on those critical aspects, then we'll be looking at other factors. And again, when I talk about critical aspects, it follows a certain direction. At times during your population of this tool, you realize when you are ranking your elements using critical aspects, at one point you'll find that uh, different elements have the same number of critical aspects. So I assume one, of, one, two, three have elements have the same number of critical aspects. Then how do you give the highest rank to that element or to those elements? So in such cases where you have uh, two or more elements having same number of critical aspects, then you need to focus on another factor and that is product and processes. So you need to go back to those uh, elements that share critical aspects and see if those performance criteria address products and processes. If you find one of them, then uh, that will be given the, the highest rank compared to then the others we follow. If again you find product and processes are addressed in all the PCs that have the same number of critical aspects, then you go to the third level and that is creativity. So again, you need to go back to those elements that share all those aspects and then look at element that address creativity. If there is, then you give the highest rank and then the, follow, the others will follow. If again, those elements do not address creativity level, then you move to the fourth aspects and that is the number of tasks. And you're talking about the number of tasks here, looking at the number of performance criteria in an element. 
again go back to those elements that share all those and then uh, now look at how many pieces does each element have so the highest you give the highest rank if again the same are shared then the last thing you want to do is look at those pieces again and look at those that address knowledge and performance so if you find pieces that only address performance then they will take the highest rank compared to those that will address knowledge so basically that is uh, the direction that you need to use and you're going to see it practically what i mean when you're dealing with critical aspects so tivet sidak has already given us a direction on how to distribute this weight because we need to assess knowledge you also need to assess skills so that is theory and practical for different levels of qualifications if you are dealing with the level six then uh, you're going to have a ratio of one to one 50 by 50. so it goes down up to level three and the theory will take 20 percent and practical will take 80 percent in that ratio so you're going to see how again do we employ uh, this when you want to distribute our weights to different performance criteria so let's dive in and see how we're able to populate performance criteria using critical aspects so we want to populate uh, performance criteria weighting tool using critical aspects so i've opened my os in the unit of competency performing methodological tests and then on my right i have a blank word document which I want to transfer the critical aspects. So you go to where critical uh, PCs have been highlighted and we said you find them in the evidence guide here. So you want to use this now to populate uh, a performance criteria weighting. So to make our work easy so that we don't miss any aspects, I'm going to copy paste all this So I'll call these critical aspects. So they have uh, 1.1 to 1.11. So always ensure that you don't miss any critical aspect of a unit of competency. So what follows next is uh, we want to find out where these PCs are addressed in our performance criteria. So you go back to your elements and uh, performance criteria here. So you want to see, ideally when you're developing an occupational standard and you've already developed a performance criteria, you just need to pull out which PCs are critical for each element and then you put them under critical aspects. So we are going to look at critical aspects and where they really fall in our performance criteria so in this case uh, let's start with uh, this 1.1 so you'll find this addressed in 1.1 uh, so so i need to highlight so that you know that you have dealt with that even here that's one is gone and then you go to two find out where that is addressed so you do all for all these critical uh, aspects
So we have already uh, highlighted all the critical aspects in our OS. And this is now how it looks. Let me bring it up. So you can see the distribution of uh, critical aspect in our performance criteria. So this is what you're going to use to populate our PC waiting tool. So in our part three of uh, populating performance criteria waiting, we now focus on uh, populating uh, PC waiting uh, template. So let's meet in our next video. Thank you.